God, what a voice. If I was, um, if I was talented as her, they would keep me in prison forever. <laughs> but every time we sing with David, we're being kicked out. The last time we were singing, they, say, they said we we're disrupting the entire police station. <laughs> and no one can walk. Yeah, from time to time I was asking God, God, well, it feels like it's not fair that some people have such a beautiful talent and me, you have given me a talent to tick people off. <laughs> And it feels unfair. But I guess God gives whatever he gives. And we have to be grateful for every gift. So I am grateful that at least I have one. <laughs> and uh, uh, by the look of their responses from the corrupted authorities, I'm pretty good at it. Ticking them off, those devils. Uh, before we start, I have a fiery sermon that I wanted to deliver for a very long time. But before we can do that, I want to ask Serge and, and your wife and this beautiful baby to come here. We have a new addition into our church. We want to dedicate this baby, bless this baby. If you can stand up, church, and raise your hands. And we're going to speak life and blessing and healing and future destiny, God's destiny over this family, over this baby. You know, what a beautiful baby. You know, I, when I see babies, I have very weird urges. I just want to hug them and kiss them and eat them piece by piece, you know. I didn't give it back. Um, I, just, I just love babies. You can start with it too. This is, okay, he, 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 the father gave me permission to start with it too, so, okay. You know, this is the future. I want you to see the future. That's the future of this country. That's the future of the church. Those are the children we fight for. The children that one day are going to stand up, rise up, and be the voice in the wilderness. So, Father God, There you go, Fanta Arts Avenue. It looks like we're professional. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bless this baby. I bless him, Father. With your perfect will, we dedicate this baby and his life in your future. We're giving it to you. He belongs to you. You died for this baby. You died for his life. You rose from the grave so he can have a future. You have raised him up in a mother's womb so he can become a lion that follows the lion from the tribe of Judah. We bless him today, Father, with your perfect will, with health, with wisdom from above, with the spirit of the living God that will dwell in him. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill him right now with your fire, fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let him burn for you. We bless his life. He's coming in and going out. We pray that no weapon forged against him shall prosper. And no lying time will be able to prevail against him. He will declare the will of the living God. He will be walking in the ways of the father Abraham. In the name of Jesus, we bless him today. As a church, we bless him. In the name of Jesus. Also, we bless the Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for his life. I thank you, Father, that you have raised him for such a time as this. I thank you that he is a man. He's not pretending to be something else like so many are today, but he is a man. You raised him to be a man. You built him to be a man. Thank you, Father, that he is a warrior of Christ courageous with faith bless him in the name of Jesus I bless the mother in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I bless her with your perfect will as well 
Whatever you have in store for this family, Father, we pray that the enemy will not be able to mess it up. Bless them, keep them, and protect them as they're going to raise their son to be a mighty man of God. Amen. Let this family be a testimony of the living God and the power from above. The greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the devil and those that follow him. In the name of Jesus, we bless them. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. It's truly a, a joyful day when we can see children being born and future being raised. It's amazing. Our baby, baby's name is Theo. The children can go downstairs, if that's your wish. But of course, we are here for the freedom. You want to stay and listen to me, that's fine too. Well, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We give you all the glory for everything, Father. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being real being warriors thank you for not being cowards especially right now where so many people are running away left and right terrified terrified of men terrified of sickness terrified of what the enemy is throwing and forgetting the promises of god and that song that song was so beautiful because it reminded us that in the end of the day, when you are in the army of God, when you're on the right side of the fence, you cannot lose. No matter what is going to happen around, you cannot lose. You're destined to win. So let's open our Bibles to Luke 10, 19. And here is the promise from God himself, from Jesus himself. Behold, I give unto you, unto whom? Unto Hinsha, unto liar Kenny, unto corrupted police officers. No. Behold, I give unto you. He's talking to the church. He's talking to his children. Power. I think that's what we're lacking in the church because you can't have power if you're a coward. That reminds me of the story of the Israelites when they were facing the uncircumcised Philistines. And there was a big dude that was coming out, Insha was his name. <laughs> and he stood in front of the armies of the living God. And yeah, he was puffing his muscles. And he was a show off. But the thing is, what it took it was just a little stone to get him to the ground. But the people were terrified. They were cowards. And he took an outsider smelling like a sheep. I'm sure he was a Polish guy. <laughs> uh, at, at least Polish ancestry. It's a guarantee. And he looked at this and he said, well, what's going on here? The dude is big, but that's a guarantee that I will not miss it when I'm going to strike his forehead. But the whole nation, the church, was terrified. And that's what we're seeing right now. The church is terrified because the enemy is big. It's pumping their muscle and puffing and putting their chests up and saying, well, we have the power. No. Luke 10, 19. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy. And nothing. What? Again, say it. What? Nothing. Shall by any means hurt you. You know, every time the enemy is throwing something at you, you know, that's the moment of your elevation, your blessing. The Bible says when all those different evil things are being done to you, rejoice, it says. Be glad. Why? Because great is your reward when those things happen to you. It's a promotion. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
You know, I have been saying this for such a long time that sometimes I sound like a broken record. What is your identity? Who are you? Are you a goat, a wolf, a sheep, or a lion? That's a very important question. You have to answer that for yourself. Because Jesus was a lion for three and a half years, and only the last few hours he turned himself into a lamb to be slaughtered. But he was roaring like a lion. He was a lion from the tribe of Judah, walking around. Every time he opened his mouth, it was a roar. It was not like, meh, 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 meh. I don't see that in the Bible. And if I'm mistaken, please show it to me. Because every time he opens his mouth, it's like, boom, explosion. That's all the sheep. Meh. He was a lion. So we're called to be lions, but you see, we're being born as sheep. And that's true. You're being born as a sheep, but then you grow to be a lion. Amen. But the devil is a clever liar. A liar. He wants you to think that you're sheep, powerless, mm -hmm. and you have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. No, we are lions. Jesus calls us friends. We are his family. He calls us our brothers, his brothers and his sisters. Therefore, if he is a lion, that means we are the lions as well. And he is raising up the greatest and the biggest pride of lions this earth has ever seen. Amen. Daniel 3. Daniel 3, verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar, King... But Nenshi, I shouldn't say that anymore because he's out. Yeah. King Kenny, with his minion ninja, made an image of God, 60 cubits high and six cubits wide and set it on up on the plain of Dura in the province of Alberta. <laughs> he then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. You see, he put a huge muzzle out there, built from gold, and he says, now you bow. You have to bow and you have to worship that. Why? Because we say so. Yeah. So the people, unfortunately, they don't think for themselves. That's right. They just love to follow the devil. Mm -hmm. So the satraps, pre prefects, and all those other people all over the province assembled for the dedication of the image, the king, ninja, whatever, Jason, Kenny, Trudeau, has set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations, this is not just for Alberta, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you're commanded to do. There's no option for you. We're telling you that you have to do it or else. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, all those other instruments, all kinds of music, you must. We're not giving you an option. You must fall down and worship the image of God, King Kenny Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall, whoever doesn't follow their instructions, whoever doesn't follow their mandates, will not fall down and worship them immediately. Don't you find this fascinating that the moment this devil, this wannabe doctor Hinsha opens her mouth, it becomes a law. And you must. It doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. It doesn't matter that it's not following the science. It doesn't matter that it's not following the biologists, biologists, scientists, you know, real, real experts. No, it doesn't matter. The moment she opens her mouth, you must immediately follow the rules or you will get tickets you will be shut down you will be all kinds of different things will be done to, to you you will be thrown into a blazing furnace therefore as soon as they heard the sound of the horn and i think this is the saddest part of the story it's not that those wannabe tyrants those pharaohs of today are implementing evil laws that doesn't surprise me at all 
wicked people, that's what they do. You, I don't expect the wicked to be righteous. I do not expect the people that bring darkness to shine for Jesus. No, they're wicked. They're evil people. Yeah. Hell awaits all of them. Every single one of them. Yeah. They will face the judge of judges that doesn't take pride and they have nothing on him. Because you have to remember what we are witnessing right now is bribery and blackmail. Yeah. Judges are blackmailed or bribed. Politicians are blackmailed or bribed. And that's what we're facing. That's why there's such a lawlessness in the land because they have something on them. But the sad part of the story is that, that the, as soon as they heard the sound of those instruments, all the nations... And that's what we're seeing right now. And the peoples of every language fell down and worshipped yeah. the image of God. The king Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Wow. No resistance. You would think that people would think for themselves, hey, wait a second, that's crazy order. That's unacceptable. We're not going to do it. You would think that they're going to rise up and say, hey, no. Yeah. Just simply no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't take... You know, genius to say no. I'm not going to comply. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to worship your stupid thing because it doesn't make any sense. I will not. But here it says that all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshiped the image of God that the king Nebuchadnezzar has set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. You see, you will always have your wonderful neighbors or co-workers, those leeches, snitches, I call them, leech snitch. Those people cannot survive on their own. They need to suck the blood of other people. They cannot survive on their own. So they're so miserable, they want you to be as miserable as they are. Yeah. They are wearing a muzzle like a proper dog, and they want you to wear one as well. Yeah. Yesterday, I went to Walmart. And I was walking, just one person in the entire mall without a muzzle. And this crazy woman, those, don't you love those currents? Yes, they're absolutely fascinating. Because it looks like they're being triggered. Like, switch, and she jumped. When I was walking, and that's how I noticed this crazy woman, she jumped. Just, no, I'm not exaggerating. Ah! Just like that. When she saw me not wearing a muzzle. I was like, wow! You don't see stuff like this unless you watch Hollywood movies. I was very privileged to see a crazy person like that. I mean, you don't see them very often, but when you do, it's like fascinating. From a psychological point of view. And then she followed me. He's not wearing a muzzle. He's not wearing a muzzle. Can you see? Do you see? And she was announcing it like a her. <laughs> so I had my personal escort. King Arthur is walking through them all with personal heralds. He's not wearing a mask. He's not wearing a mask. Wow. Don't you love those types of people? So those currents of that time went to the king and they said, may the king live forever. You know, they always love to kiss the bats, you know. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn and those different instruments must fall down and worship the image of God. And whoever will not, it goes to the fire, blazing furnace. But there are some Pavlovskis out there. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but they're not following our science. Ooh. That the virus somehow has to keep his six feet distance. <laughs> they're not following science that when you're standing, you're dead. When you're sitting and eating, you're perfectly safe. They're not following our science. That you, when you put your pampers on your face, somehow you're protected uh, and the Palaskis are not following the science, our science. King, do something. Can he do something with them? Those Palaskis are crazy. 
But there are some Palaskis who you have said over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, Hinshah. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of God you have set up. You see, they're different. They're not worshiping like we are worshiping CBC, broadcasting lying propaganda machinery. They refuse to worship CBC liars, so-called reporters. They refuse that. So furious with rage, Jason Kenny, the wannabe Nebuchadnezzar, summoned Pavlovskis, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Art. So these men were brought before the king, and Kenny said to them, is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of gold I have set up, the golden mask. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, you see, the devil will give you a second chance. You know that? He will tell you, do the right thing. <laughs> you know, I love when he said that. Well, a liar. Do the right thing. That means you're going to lose your legs and your arms. You're going to betray God. When the devil tells you do the right thing, you know you're not to do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Furious with rage, he summoned the boys and he said, I'm giving you a second chance. That if you will hear the sound of the music and if you are ready, that's why conditioning is so important for those people. They're conditioning us left and right. Yeah. So when the time comes, they will say, are you now ready? You see, you're going to lose your jobs. Uh -huh. We're going to take your jobs away. First, it was two weeks to flatten the curve. Now it's two years later to flatter your bank accounts and yeah. your businesses. Yeah. That's what the whole thing is all about, to eliminate opposition, to destroy yeah. you yeah. because you are free. Yeah. And they hate that. Tyrants don't want yeah. free people. Tyrants want slaves. Yeah. They want slaves. And they cannot have it unless they finish you off. This is the greatest, like I said so many times, greatest elimination of the middle class ever seen in the history yeah. of mankind. Destruction of small and medium-sized businesses yeah. we've never seen. Yeah. Elimination of opposition. Uh -huh. That's what they're doing. Exactly. First, put the muzzle on, and two weeks, come on, it's not hard to do that, right? Two weeks? You know, if this was truly two weeks, maybe even they would convince me. But I knew from the moment they opened their mouths, you see, when the devil opens his mouth, you know he's lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jason Kenny opened his mouth, I knew he's lying. And this wannabe Dr. Hinsha, when she opens her mouth every single time, she is lying. If you're ready, we have conditioned you for the past two years. Now we're telling you, are you ready now? Because by the end of this month, by the end of November, by the end of December, and they'll keep changing this whole narration, you're going to lose your job. Yeah. I say lose your job yeah. before you are willing to lose your soul. Yeah. Because it's better for you to be poor and rich in heaven than rich here and poor in heaven. I like that. I'm going to hire you. <laughs> you will be walking behind the Karens, you know, in the house. They will be announcing me, you will be announcing them. I like that. But, I'm giving you a chance, but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately. When? Immediately, immediately we're going to send health inspectors. It doesn't matter that the health Minister Chandra at that time broke his own mandates and his own restrictions. No, it doesn't matter. He is the pharaoh, you're the slave. Yeah. He is of the hook, one law for me, one law for thee. But you, you will be hunted down by his health Nazis, yeah. health inspectors. That's exactly what we're seeing all around the world. They're not even following their own mandates because they know. Yeah. They know it's a sham, it's a lie. They know that. They know. That's why they're not terrified of the virus, because they know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that should tell you everything. If they themselves are not terrified, if they themselves are not following their own restrictions, then you know it's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would be inclined to believe them if they were following their own mandates to the teeth, terrified at every corner, but they're not. Uh -huh. So that tells me everything I need to know. It's a lie. Yeah. 
It's a propaganda. And then here, listen to what he says, this king, Jason Kenny. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hands? Oh, be very careful, Kenny. Be very careful who, who you're engaging in a fight. Because when you fight with a man, he's just a man. When you fight with God, you are already a loser. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands, he said. He challenged the living God. This king challenged the living God, says, well, there's no God that is capable or able to take you boys out of my hands. That's a very good question. What kind of a God can rescue us from the hands of the wannabe tyrant, Premier of Alberta, Jason Kenney? Shadrach, Michigan, Abednego, verse 16, replied to him, King Kenny, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able, is perfectly capable to deliver us from it, and he will deliver, deliver us from your hands. But even if he does not, even if you have to pay the price, even if you have to lose your job, even if that's what God is requiring from you. We want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God you have set up. Wow! What an answer! I wish the pastors would answer in such a manner. I wish the Christians would rise up and quote this to every devil that is trying to steal your life and the life of your children. We will not, even if it will cost us our lives. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious, full of fury. With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual 20. Than usual. Verse 20. And commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Well, let's stop here for a second. Is it not fascinating that the devil will always outdo himself? He always is he's filled with hatred in such a way that he will expose himself even more. And that's exactly what happened to us during the trial. Amen. This wannabe yeah. judge, Adam Germain, yeah. this political activist, he was filled, he still is, with so much hate towards us that he completely exposed himself yeah. in a 45 minute rant that had nothing to do with the case and the merits of the case. Amen. And nothing to do with the law or order. It was a political, runs of a person that is not capable anymore of being a judge. Snake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, snakes are actually tasty. This guy is not. <laughs> so he throws them into the fire. So these men wearing all their clothes were thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Look what happened. The people that touched the anointed ones, the people that dared to touch the children of God while they were obeying the commandments of God, the best of the best in the army of Jason Kenney, Nebuchadnezzar, Die first. You see, Christians are so terrified of the fire. They're so terrified of the fire that every time the fire comes their way, they want to run away from the fire. You see, here is, here is what I want to put into your heart, into your soul, into your spirit. When you see the fire, do not run from the fire. Embrace the fire. See? I bet you can't do that. We are the fire. In the fire, 
God deals with your afflictions. In the fire, he deals with your sickness. In the fire, he deals with your enemies. Go to the fire. In the fire is your answer. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement. The king was astonished and asked his advisors, Hinsha, do you see what I see? Adam Germain or Rook, Justice Rook or Chandra or Jason Nixon, all those devils, do you see what I see? Were the three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unbound, and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Wow! How many of you want to be free? How many of you want to remain free? Well, when you go to the fire, Jesus sets you free. Every time you're willing to go to the fire, he cuts the ropes. Every time you go to the fire, he takes the shackles off your feet. But you've got to be willing to go to the fire. Verse 26. Nebuchadnezzar came in, then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Palarskis, servants of the Most High God, come out! Come here! So the Palarskis came out of the fire. And the satraps and all those hinches, the wannabe minions, the devils, governors, corrupted judges, crowded around them to check them out. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. The robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. You see, they just had a meeting or a coffee break with Jesus. He cut their robes, he cut the chains so they can sip coffee with milk and honey right there with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They couldn't do that if they were bound. So Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise be to the God of the Pavlovskis, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied. They did what? They defied the king's command. They defied the so-called held orders. They defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Another translation, it says, and delivered his servants that trusted in him. Do you trust God? Do you trust Jesus? Because majority, 99.9% .9 of the so-called Christians and the leaders in the land do not trust God. I've heard terrible horror stories that the pastors will block the doors and unless you are a guinea pig with two shots, you're not allowed to enter. If you're not muzzled like a proper dog, you're not allowed to enter. I mean, are you insane? Shame on them. Shame on those wolves. Because that's what they are. They're not, they're not shepherds of God's people. They're wolves. They're pretendees, they're just hired guns. They're doing this for their own glory, for their own money, not for the living God. A real shepherd fights off the hyenas, fends off the wolves. Doesn't dine with wolves. They trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. We have a choice, either God or the devil. There is nothing between. Amen. He's shaking in the fence. You have to choose either the living God or the devil. There's no other way. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of the Pavlovskis be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble and their houses shall be made a dunghill. For no other God, for no other God, for no other God can serve in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Alberta. If Christians understood the power of 
the testing. You see, those boys who are being tested, you're being tested. I'm being tested. That's what is happening right now. I mean, you don't have to be very smart. You don't have to be a genius to see we're just being tested. Simple as that. We have enjoyed our lives for so long, and God finally says, are you truly believing me? Are you trusting me? Do you have faith? I want to test it. Are you real or are you fake? That's, that's it. That's all. That's what the whole thing is all about. He's just testing us. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's right. This is a time of molding, purifying. The power of the willingness of going to the fire. You see, if the Christians would not be doing everything in their power to avoid this opportunity, but rather embrace it and chase every opportunity of the fire, we would not be in this mess like we are right now. Amen. Matthew 5, 11, Blessed are you. What it says? Cursed? Blessed. blessed are you. God blesses you. How blessed are you? Happy are you? Different translations. When people insult you, reproach you, revile you, mock you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you, lie about you, utter all kinds of evil against you, say all manner of evil against you, I have said every cruel thing about you because of me, for my sake, on account of me, because you are my followers. Again, blessed are you. Amen. Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be glad. Be happy about it. And I know that's a hard thing to do. But this is what the word of God says. This is what Jesus is saying. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Be happy and excited. Because why? Because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're in a good company. The cloud of witnesses is cheering you up. Keep going. Keep marching on, saints. We did it before you. Now it's your turn to be counted as heroes of faith. Remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. We read the stories of those heroes of all that we say, Wow, I wish I was with this man. I wish I was with this woman. We marvel at their courage. Their faith that moves the mountains. Today, we have the same opportunity. So other generations in the future, our children will marvel and say, my father was not a coward. My mother stood her ground. <laughs> Matthew 10, 18. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony. Why they do this? Why God is allowing this? For a testimony. I've never had a bigger pulpit in my life than right now. Yeah. Every week I'm preaching to millions of people. Millions of people. Every week I have an opportunity to preach to the masses. I'll never have this opportunity if it was not for the corruption of the Alberta government. It's a testimony against them and the Gentiles. 1 Peter 4.14 If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. When you do what is right, those that hate what is right will also hate you. Let me read this again. When you do what's right... Those that hate what is right will also hate you. The darkness hates the light. The lie hates the truth. So number one, I want to give you a few things that we can take from the story. One, so in the fire, God deals with your enemies, with your afflictions, difficulties. Whatever you're facing today, he deals with those issues when you're willing to pay the price. When you're willing to go to the fire. God says, I will listen if you obey. Disobedience or rebellion, if you will, is like a spirit of divination. It's like a witchcraft. 
How come people think, or Christians think, that God is going to hear you, He's going to answer you when you constantly disobey Him? It's beyond me. If you do not obey, do not expect God to come to the rescue. You don't believe me? Read the book of Judges. Every time they disobeyed, every time they practiced witchcraft, God withdrew his hand of protection. He says, fine, have it your way. You want to worship idols? Let the idols answer you now. And that's exactly what is happening in Canada. Canada, Canadians walked away from God. Now the land is filled with idols. And that's why we're facing difficulties right now. Because Canadians wanted to have their way. Well, are you enjoying it? You have it your way. And I don't see Canadians being very happy. He deals with your sicknesses, with your problems, with your finances. Attacks on your family. Number two. In the fire. Where? In the fire. In a beautiful environment. In a comfortable church. In a pew. Behind your television screen watching Netflix. Where? In the fire. In the fire God sets you free. Amen. Your bondage, chains, ropes are being dealt with in the fire. Whatever or whoever is holding you down. Who is holding you down today? Yeah. Who is keeping you chained today? Yahweh. When you're living, when you're willing to go to the fire, He's going to set you free. Amen. Who is keeping you away from your destiny? From the plans of God for, his, for your life? See, when Jesus shows up, you're automatically free. Amen. You're automatically free are being set free. Let's go to Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord, whose spirit? Hinshah's spirit? Can his spirit, those minions of the devil's spirit? No. The living spirit, God's spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim what? Freedom for the prisoners. That's why they hate me so much, because that's what I'm doing. I'm proclaiming freedom. You're not dogs, people. You are created in the image of the living God. Do not wear a muzzle. They want to pervert the image that God has given it to you. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Those are a few different translations. They're talking about the same thing. Praise Galatians 5, 1. It is for freedom. Slavery? Bondage? Muzzle? Yeah. Leash? Yeah. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom. How dare they to put us in chains? How dare they to do this to us? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What's up with those Christians? What's up with those pastors? They're bringing the congregations back into the land of slavery, back to Egypt. Yes. Jesus is Lord. I've heard that some of the mega churches got millions of dollars to keep the people enslaved. In the city of Calgary, $1.5 million they received one of the mega churches to keep you muzzled. Why would you even go back there ever? Because if they did it to you once, they're going to do it to you again. They will sell you to the Nazis for gold and silver. Shame on them, of course. Galatians 5:13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. Second Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit is. Freedom. 
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. John 8, 32. And you will know the truth. The whole fight is about the truth. You see, that's why they are deplatforming us. Censorship left and right. Why? Because they're terrified of the truth. The judge, this crooked judge, Adam Germain, is telling me, I cannot preach the truth for 18 months. Are you insane? From what kind of a tree you have fallen? Unbelievable. Compelled speech? Move, sir, to China. Yeah. North Korea. They love you over there. Obey the Lord. They'll use you for spare parts <laughs> in China. Yeah. You know, rightly so, Joseph Stalin called those people names, useful idiots. Because the devil uses them and then he throws them like a piece of garbage, like a filthy rag. Right. He's using them and then he throws them away, discards them. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Psalm 118.5 Out of my distress I called out on the Lord. The Lord answered me and did what? Set me free. free. Thank John. 836. So if the sun sets you free, you are what? Slave again? Free. You are free indeed. Number three, in the fire, Jesus shows up to have a personal encounter with you. In the fire, he comes to talk to you. In the fire, he sips coffee with you. And I'm telling you, I know that for a fact he loves coffee with cream and honey. So when he shows up, that's what you are to make, okay? That's how I like it. <laughs> Jesus shows up in the fire to have a personal encounter with you. John 15, 15. I'll no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. If you want to see Jesus, you have to go to the fire. He shows up in the fire. For in the fire, you have the strongest testimony. You see, the whole world is watching us right now. What will be your answer? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? The whole world is watching Christians. They have no hope. They're turning into drugs and alcohol. They're turning into all kinds of evil because the church failed. Now it's our opportunity to be like Shadrach, Michigan, and Abednego and have a testimony. You see, our God is perfectly able to set us free. We have hope. I don't know how people are surviving another day telling you the truth. With all those uncircumcised Philistines right now, I don't know how they're surviving another day. I'm telling you the truth. Without God, I would quit a long time ago. He is the one that fires me up. He is the one that reminds me of every promise he has ever given it to me. He is reminding me, great is your reward. You see, you may not see it on this side of eternity, but I'm telling you, mansion waits for you and for people that love me. Do you know that the pavement, when was the last time you took asphalt home? I want to hear, I want to see your hands. When was the last time you went outside and took a little bit of asphalt home? You didn't? You're crazy? The Bible says that asphalt in heaven is gold the roads are paved with gold incredible what god has created for those that love him the eye have not seen the ear have not heard the mighty things that god created for those that are willing to obey in the fire you have the strongest testimony the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the real deal christians that actually believe would that be a change? The Christians actually believe Jesus. what they preach. People that have faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Jesus says, when I come back, will I find faith? Yeah. Clergymen yeah. that do what they preach and preach what they do. Yeah. In the persecution, people will see Jesus in you. How you react, how you behave, what you do. When the fire comes to you. Revelations 12, 11. And they overcome him, the devil, the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and 
by the word of their testimony. Not the bank account, you sure? Not the title on your wall? A diploma, no? By the word of their testimony. Do you have one? Do you have a testimony? So the devil, the Nazis, the Gestapo showed up and says, we're going to fire you. So fire me so I can be on fire. And I know that's difficult, believe me. When we were abandoned by the church, for seven years, every year I had to remortgage my house. Every year. Every year I had to go to Egypt and ask for another mortgage. And that was a tough thing. So don't you dare ever say, I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm telling you lose it all so you can gain it all. You have to give up your careers. You have to give up your houses. You have to give up everything for the kingdom of God. When you do that, when you go to the fire, he shows up. When he shows up, he shows up with an entourage yes. of his blessings. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Just like those boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God is perfectly able. But if you will choose not to, that's fine too. We're going to see him the next moment. Five. In the fire, God elevates you. You want to be elevated? You want to have a promotion? Who wants to be promoted? Well, your promotion comes through the fire. You want to be promoted in the kingdom of God? You will be tested. God will deal with your affliction, with your enemies. He's going to spend some time with you, purify you. Then you're going to have a testimony. And when you go all those through all those stages, then you will get your promotion. In other words, you will get a bigger pulpit when you go through the fire, when you're willing to pay the price. You see, if you're faithful with little, God is going to give you more. If you're not faithful with little, how can you expect God to give you anything more? In the fire is your promotion. Luke 16, 10. Whoever is faithful with very little, so sometimes we are looking at our lives and we are saying, well, there's not very much I can offer. I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little girl out of seven billions. What can I do? How can I contribute to the kingdom of God? Well, be faithful with little. Whatever he has given you, see this little girl, Shiloh, she's nine years old and she's singing. She's using whatever God has given it to her. She's using that, and I bet when she's going to stay faithful, God is going to increase and give her more, a bigger platform, a bigger opportunities. That's how we are to live our lives. Be very, very faithful with whatever He's giving you now. He's giving us little. That means when you will pass the test, more is going to come. Whoever is faithful with very little will also be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So now let's look at our nation today. God has blessed Canada with every blessing you heart desires. This is one of the most beautiful nations on earth. The founding fathers started this nation... On a foundation of freedom, believe it or not. Do you know the history of North America? The Europeans escaped Europe because of persecution. You know that? They were hunted down, burned on stakes, and finally they decided to come to North America. And some settled in Quebec and Canada and United States. But that was why they came. They were sick and tired of persecution. And they came and they started a nation or a land... Of freedom. The they called it the new world. You know why they called it the new world? Because they said this will be a place without persecution. This will be a place where a man can worship his God without being hunted down like a white tail in the bushes. <laughs> so I can watch, I can work hard and I can achieve something. I can build a house for my family and I can leave a legacy behind for the future. So I can build a nation that every man is equal, just like is equal in the eyes of God. 
What we're witnessing right now is the greatest segregation ever seen on this side of an eternity. We are reliving 50s and 60s in the United States of America. This is unbelievable. I remember studying this time of Martin Luther King Jr. civil rights movement when the black people were not allowed to go to certain places, where they were not allowed to sit at the same seats like the whites. They were not allowed to go to restaurants or bars or different places. They were not allowed to study in the same universities. Look at what is happening today. It's a repetition of history. Now the enemy is using the same tactics. Divide and conquer. You're not allowed to go to a restaurant. Why? Because you're not willing to be a guinea pig. Others are willing to be guinea pig. Good for them. I'm a good Christian. Take my jobs too. Take all of them. Stick it. All over you if that's your wish. That's your life. You see, in the end of the day, you're going to stand before the living God by yourself. You won't be dragging Hinsha next to you and say, Oh, she told me to do it. You will be there naked and alone. And you will be accountable for everything you said, everything you did. You won't be able to say, Well, the Prime Minister told me to do it. Or Premier of Alberta, the liar, cheater, manipulator, corrupted, evil individual, Jason Kenney. No. You will stand before God by yourself. You won't be able to drag your husband. Oh, it was my husband's fault. And Adam will not be able to come and say, it's the woman you gave me. Therefore, God, it's your fault. No. By yourself, naked. You will stand before the judge of judges that doesn't take any bribes. So be faithful. Stand your ground. But pastor, you don't understand. I'm going to lose your, my job. How am I going to pay my bills? Well, that's a good question. Because now you're saying that God is a liar. When he says that I provide even for the sparrows. But you're telling him he's not going to be able to provide for you, his child. You see, that's the problem with Christianity today. We have no faith. That's why when the government did boo, we jumped through the windows. When the government says bow, we were more than eager to, eager to go and bow. Faith. Where is faith that moves the mountains? When I was in the States, I had people coming to me and, you know, are you not afraid? And I shared that a few times. Are you not afraid of the virus? No. The viruses are afraid of me. And if I get one, so what? Every year my kids go to school, every year they come with something. Stomach flu, this flu, that flu. I've lost count of the flus. So what? You go through it and your immunity is getting stronger. Now they're cooking all kinds of, you know, they said Delta is here and now Beta is here. It's, listen. You can go through the entire stupid alphabet like you do with the LGBTQ+, plus, whatever. And I'm telling you that I don't care about that stuff because why should I? Why would I care about Delta when I serve Alpha and Omega? And I end the day. In the end of the day, we have to understand who our God is. That's the number one thing in order to be victorious in a Christian love. Who is your God? How big is your God? Is he bigger than Hinshaw? Is he bigger than Justin Trudeau? Is he bigger than globalist? Is he bigger than all the minions of the devil? Is he bigger than the devil himself? If he is bigger, then you have nothing to fear, even if you have to go to the fire. Another thing is, as important as the first one, do you know who you are in God? Who are you? Well, you can be bad, bad, bad. And you will end up on our grill. And I'll hate to cook you, grill you. And I will look at you and say, oh my God, they had an opportunity to be lions. You see, lions we never cook. But sheep from time to time will end up on our grill. And they're tasty creatures. 
I had to see you grilled at Street Church. Be a lion and lionesses. That's your destiny. Do you know who you are? You're the sons of the Most High God. You're the daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Greater is he that is in you than the one that is in them. With God, you already won. When God is on your side, the enemy already lost. Now imagine a church on fire. Imagine a church that keeps the doors open and says to the devil, get out. Get out. Instead of inviting the devil in and saying, sir, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like a tea? Can I make a dinner for you? Can I kiss your bum, devil? That's what the pastors are doing right now. They're kissing the bum of the devil. You know that? That's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in history. Even during the Nazi era, there was a lot of pastors that rose against, a lot of Christians that rose against the fascists. Now, 99.9% .9 of the so-called pastors, priests, including this devil, the Pope, an antichrist that sold his faith to the devil, has, have compromised. Unbelievable. I've never seen something like this before. I remember the time when the Nazis were commanding the churches to put swastika outside, but many didn't. Many did, but many didn't. Now it looks like swastikas are flying all across this nation globally following the orders of the fascists, communists, instead of following the commandments of God. That's a real shame. And one day, every one of them will pay for their treachery. You see, what I know about the traitors is this. You might have the silver and gold for time being. But to the silver and gold, the ball of soup, there's always a rope attached to it. And sooner or later, you shall hang for your treachery. Because God will not be mocked. Be blessed, church. If you're going to the rally, see you at the rally. Um, here, here is the idea that we have right now. Would you be interested or some of you to have a Bible study during the week in the church? Because we sometimes feel that once a week is not enough. And some people would like to come in the middle of the week. So if there is an interest, I'm going to try to rent a place for the weekdays and we can have Winfred and Kelly and others just to do a Bible study, so a little bit more in depth and, and worship and so okay so I welcome that be blessed and see you next time and come for the prayer I'll, I'll pray for you now elders if you can come we're going to anoint people we're going to pray for them for God's perfect will to manifest in their lives God is a good God, and if you have any affliction, if you have any need, anything that you need God to do for you, come and we will pray. Amen.